I'm Zach Phillips, and tonight we're going to be breaking down game number eight of the Toronto Maple Leafs regular season, dropping this one 5-1 to one to the St. Louis Blues here tonight, moving to 4-4 four and four on the season. Um, I'm not entirely sure where this stream is going to go here tonight. I'm going to try to not lose my mind because I think a lot of you are right. I think Nick, who tweeted out during the game here tonight, is right as well. Uh, you don't want to overreact. You don't want to kind of freak out too much. I heard about it a little bit after game number seven when I talked about this as well and kind of the back and forth that we experience as a fan base going from Monday night seeing maybe one of the best games I've seen this Leafs team play, not in the last little while, but basically since we've seen this group playing for this team. Uh, and then we followed it up on Tuesday night with the most pathetic performance I've seen of this group, or one of the most pathetic performances I've seen of this group in a very, very, very long time in Columbus on Tuesday night. Just an embarrassing effort from start to finish, thinking that won't happen again. Thursday night, St. Louis, the Craig Berube revenge game. The boys hyped it up this morning. Braden Shen came on the show on Leafs Morning Take a couple days ago and teed up how he thought this one might go, how Berube wants to establish an identity with the team. We had videos coming out here from our post-game shows talking about how this was potentially a culture change that we had seen in this team. And I'm not going to overreact in terms of Oh, can they make the playoffs? Will they will they miss it this year? Are they going to be one of the worst teams? Are they a lottery team? No, obviously not. That's not the case. But am I going to get pissed off about the fact that this is the same garbage we see from this team over and over and over again every year? And it felt like this would be the first time that we saw this group under Craig Berube just not allowed to have this, not allowed to have, make excuses, not allowed to show up to a game in Columbus on a Tuesday night and just completely piss off and just not engage, not have energy, not have any excitement. And then you go into to this game here tonight thinking this team has to be different, right? This team has to have something a part of them. They've got to have something within in that locker room to say we're not going to let down Craig Berube, the team that fired him, a team that he won a Stanley Cup for and let him go. We're going to get the Craig Berube revenge game and do it for him. Even if you don't win the game, are you going to show up and play? Are you going to show up and have an in some intensity and some effort for him? And then they just did not. They just did not. Jeffrey Curry in the chat. I said before the season, this is a wild card team. I stand by that. Jeffrey, I think that's an out to lunch take. I'm not going to lie. I know we're talking about how this team is looking kind of pathetic right now and through this. That's pretty absurd to me. You want to talk about overreaction? There you go. That's some overreaction. That's not going to happen. I'm more talking about their ability to win and go far in the playoffs. These are the things that need to change. Are they going to go 500 the rest of the way? No, they're not. Are they going to make the playoffs? Are they going to get into the first round? Are they going to play, finish probably second or third in the division and play one of these teams? Likely. That's what's going to happen. It's just, are they a different group? Games like tonight tell you they're not. Games like tonight feel like there's just no difference in them, no matter who's at the helm. And this is where it just starts to feel like this, this revolving or this revolving door or, or nonstop circle of like new year, you add a new, you get a new GM. Ooh, things will be different. You get a new coach. Ooh, things will be different. You get new defensemen and new players in here outside of them. Things will be different. Maybe it just won't because the core and the nucleus of this group does not change. And the reality is we're going to get to the playoffs. We're going to get into there into the first round, no matter what. Like this team is just too good to not do that. So they're going to get there. But are we going to have to wait again until April to find out that they can't do it? And I know that we're talking about something that's months and months away. And this is game eight of the season. And I'm sorry that we're going to come on here and have this conversation. And in game eight, I'm not saying this is a team that's not making the playoffs. I still am hanging on to that. They are, and they're going to be a top three in the Atlantic. Like, let's not be absurd like some people in the chat here. Like, we got to calm down on some of that. But 
are they going to be able to do it? Are they a changed group? They basically like tricked us on Monday night. We came on here and said they played 60 minutes through the first six games. It felt like they were six for six for starting on time. They brought intensity. They brought energy. They were blowing guys over. They would just run through the other team. They would finish checks. They gave you no time, no space. They just took it all away. And then we said, you know what? Even though this team is not going to go 82-0, and obviously, and win every single game, you're telling me that all of a sudden, a couple days later, it's just a complete different group out there on the ice. You're telling me that we're just going to watch an entirely different team? That's it, 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 that's what's lacking right now. That's what's lacking from this group. Anything different. And it's because I feel I feel like it's because these same guys are here. No matter how much you change the rest of it, the, the, the country club attitude that had been installed in this team for the last nine years was accepted and fostered, has continued, and you can't get rid of it, of it unless you just, if, I mean, that's when you take the drastic measure, you know, I'm talking the overreact and going nuts, is ship someone out. You want to wake up that room? Someone's got to go then. Because otherwise, it's just going to be the same carousel of shit for this whole season. The first line. I, and it's hard. It's ter I hate it right now having to talk about this because the first line. Seeing Matthew Nyes and the way that that kid plays and how pissed off he gets and how feisty he is and how much he gets involved in stuff and how much he won't back down on things. I hate having to come on the show after and say, oh, the first line. The kid's a fucking animal. This guy's amazing. And I'm not talking about amazing, all oh, like mine, like blow you away, gonna get paid like Prosby, Ovechkin, McDavid, amazing. I'm talking about amazing in terms of like, this guy is everything Leafs fans want. He's got some skill. He plays hard. He won't back down from anyone. He fights till the final whistle. Like, he brings all of that to this team. And he's just a kid. It's like Debo, first line, minus Nyes. Yeah, the first line has stuck. One of my buddies texted me during the game. I, I hadn't even seen the tweet. He texted me during the game. A tweet from Luke Fox Jukebox. Nice Matthews Marner line was minus five over the last five periods. You can't have that, man. This is not even like looking at plus minus. That's the most surface level stat of all time. You can't look at each of these. You can't look at each of these and say, yeah, pin on the plus minus on a guy, and this is who he is, and he's bad at this, or things happen. This Some of it's unlucky. Some of them you need to look at circumstance. Some of them a guy might be out there minus two on the year, and he finishes over 82, and you're like, oh, well, he was out there for two less than he was on four. But at the same time, maybe the guy's out there for power plays, and he's getting those, and those are going unnoticed because they're not affecting those stats. This lineup is not even scoring on the power play right now. You can't even create with an extra man on the ice to the point where it feels almost like it's like you need you need to just decline the power play. It's almost better to just go five on five with these guys because the power play, by the time you get into it, it's just the other team gets more ment momentum out of them. That's what's infuriating right now. For more content just like this, including game previews, post-game live shows, Leafs Morning Take, Monday through Friday with Nick Alberga and Jay Rose Hill with special guests, as well as instant reaction videos. Make sure to be subscribed here to the Leafs Nation YouTube channel. Turn on notifications so you don't miss anything and drop a like.